What if I gave you a step-by-step -step plan that, while it would probably be the most difficult thing you've ever had to follow, it is within your ability and it would turn you into the wealthiest, most loved, and most respected human being on earth in all in about six months. You think you could follow it? Now, cards on the table, I don't have a plan like that. However, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to accomplish almost anything you want without losing motivation. My name's Henry Bingaman. I've been earning a living online as a freelancer or independent professional since 2008. Today, on top of freelancing, I make videos like this to help you build a high income freelance career. Here's the main point I wanna get across in this video. We're held back more by ourselves than by our talent or ability. There are two emotions more than any others that are holding you back, shame and fear. Shame is an enormous mental block for most people. Not all shame is bad. The thing is most people have way too much shame. They feel they're not worthy or not good enough to make a ton of money or even just make money on their own outside of some corporate structure where somebody else is paying you as an employee. When you feel weak or small or insignificant or stupid, that's shame. And everyone has moments of those feelings, but if they're too overwhelming, then they're holding you back. Think about it this way. If you have those feelings of being weak and small or insignificant or stupid, how could you picture yourself being strong, important, smart, wealthy? Your brain can't imagine it. That freelance life just seems impossible for you to picture. That's why you have to get rid of some of these feelings of shame, at least tone them down. Now, the other thing that holds freelancers back is fear. Fear of failure or fear of success. The fear of getting hurt the fear of rejection, the fear that you're gonna fail and everyone's gonna think you're dumb for trying. Look, I've dealt with all of these when I was starting out. I got into freelancing in 2008. Damn! I'm sorry. This was the middle of the great financial crisis. Now, I got a couple writing clients early. I thought, oh, this is easy. Quit my full-time job and went full-time freelance, which worked out great for three or four months until I lost both of my clients and I couldn't find any new ones. And then I started living on credit cards, which is a horrible idea. It was very easy for me to max out a $21,000 credit card limit, which they should not have given to a 22-year-old kid, especially when my only other source of income was the occasional $200 to $500 writing project. But I was blowing through that. That was more than rent and car payments alone. So I just wallowed in shame and fear while barely scraping by for that first year or so. Sometimes I get a good project. Most of the time, I just felt bad for myself. And I almost quit freelancing a few times. But it was really a balance of two types of shame. On the quit freelancing and try to get a job side was the shame of ever having thought I could do this at all. On the other side was the shame of having tried and publicly failing. I thought on balance, publicly failing and admitting I'd been wrong was the worst shame. So I decided I had to make it work, all or nothing. Now, eventually, I did discover why I had such big problems initially as a freelancer. And I tell that whole story and how I turned it around and built up to a million dollar income in my Freedom Formula video. So link for that below. But you know what would have been a much better approach? Learning to actually process the shame and fear in a healthy way much earlier in my life. If you're interested in starting freelancing or if you've started already and it's starting to feel a little overwhelming to the point where the fear and shame is holding you back and making you want to quit, this exercise will be worth it. I call it the arguing with yourself method. The first thing you're gonna have to do is write down all of those dark thoughts floating around your head. Write them down in exactly the way you're hearing them. If the phrase you keep telling yourself is, I'm so stupid, don't soften it up and write down, I'm not smart enough. You wanna capture the voice you're using in your own head. Try to find the top three to maybe five of these thoughts. Write them all out in your own words in quotation marks. Then here's the fun part. You're gonna act like your own lawyer. So for every one of those thoughts, write down, quote, I think you know, and then the exact negative thought you've identified earlier, and then argue against it. So for the example that I gave, I know you think I'm so stupid, but the truth is you are not stupid. You did much better than average in school. None of your friends think you're stupid. In fact, some of them, like Bob, have said you're very smart. You get the point. Find the things that sound true to you. Argue against yourself and keep going until you run out of arguments. If you look at this like creating a balance sheet, you're trying to weaken the side with all those negative arguments. You're not gonna get rid of the shame. You're not gonna get rid of the fear but you're gonna bring down the intensity. Then you need to tap into the positive emotions. The two strongest positive emotions are joy and passion. At least in this context, there is the emotion of love that can be relevant here, but I'd rather just stick with joy and passion for this. So write out all the amazing things that would happen in your life once you have a highly successful, high paying freelance career and be as detailed as you can. How good will you feel? How much better will your relationships be? How much more freedom will you have in your life? And what will you do with it? And the idea isn't to just do this exercise once. It's to do this as often as you need. Do it daily, do it weekly, whatever. What you're doing with the first part of the exercise is reducing the fear, reducing the shame that's holding you back. Not necessarily eliminate it, but bringing it down to a lower level and then increasing the vision of the future you're building towards. So what I mean by that is you're decreasing the emotional costs and increasing the emotional rewards. 
Now, once that reward is so big and the cost seems so reasonable, motivation to just keep moving becomes almost effortless. The cost is so worth the reward that it's just a no-brainer. At that point, where those big negative emotions are out of the way, that's when you can really start living up to your true potential. And that's where it really is your talent and skills that dictate what you get paid, which is gonna be a lot more than you thought I would be willing to bet. Now, you wanna know another way to make sure you can get paid what you're worth as a freelancer? Using the right tools. And that's why I wanna show you the five best free tools for freelancers. These cost you nothing, but they make you look like a total pro even at the beginning of your career. So just go to henrybing.co slash free tools or click the link in the description. Also, if you want more secrets to freelance success, subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications. Don't forget to hit that like icon as well. All right, I'll catch you in the next one.